Samuel Oduwewa Ali. Today it's my pleasure to have with me Nicholas Anarsin. He is the team leader in Vest in Denmark, which is part of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Denmark. Nicholas, you are welcome. What they do is to make sure people who want to establish businesses in Denmark are well equipped to see how they could start in Denmark. If I should pick only one reason for investing in a site in Denmark, it would be the easy access to a variety of talent uh, within many domains of user-centered design. solutions that uh, invest in Denmark have so that our viewers can know what you have for them? Of course. Um, invest in Denmark is a uh, full-service uh, organization um, which helps foreign investors who are looking to invest in Denmark um, to uh, get knowledge of the various strongholds in Denmark. Um, we work with the foreign investors in terms of identifying business opportunities, uh, arranging meetings, uh, background analyses, and um, in general try to uh, position uh, their business uh, proposals in the, in the Danish market and, uh, and bring them through the process of uh, ultimately having them establish a business here in Denmark. That is nice. So you have a lot that you offer people. Um, what specific thing do you think somebody really need to start with? If a company want to establish business in Denmark. What is the first step? I think the uh, the first step is is uh, is uh, taking a, a look at the uh, at the Danish marketplace and uh, and uh, and viewing uh, if it is a foreign company who's looking to tap into the Danish market or the Nordic market, for example, um, getting a better knowledge of of how the, their products could be positioned in the marketplace. But more specifically, we work with the. Uh, the clusters uh, which are strong in Denmark um, and, and these clusters we try to uh, match up if the company from, uh, from abroad is, is looking to invest in these, uh, these clusters, uh, connect them with the R&D people in, in okay. the various clusters mm -hmm. and, and through that uh, um, get them, uh, get, give them a better idea if uh, Denmark is the right place for them to, to invest in. That's nice. Well actually what do you think we want, I mean, we want somebody to come to Denmark out of many other European mm -hmm. countries because we have other European countries that are also doing well in businesses. What type of advantage does Denmark have over other European countries? Mm, De Denmark is a, uh, is a small economy uh, but very uh, strong and stable so has been able to uh, come through the financial crisis uh, really, relatively strongly um, and that's due to a strong business framework and, and, uh, and, and legal setup for running business in general. So, so that's on the, the framework level but, but more specifically on the, uh, on the knowledge areas Denmark has a world uh, world-class uh, um, companies and research within the life sciences companies such as Novo Nordisk and other uh, people would have heard of uh, internationally we have on the IT sector, for example, a company like uh, Microsoft has a large development center in Denmark. Um, and then, of course, on the clean tech uh, area, um, the, the wind technology is, is probably more well known uh, globally, uh, Vestas. So mm. these uh, are, are three uh, main areas. Uh, but also um, interesting for foreign investors is uh, the shipping and maritime industry, where a company like uh, Maersk is a is a, a global brand and, and can be a driver for attracting uh, foreign companies to come and, and do business within uh, these sectors. That is interesting. But do you want to tell our viewers that the tax rate here in Denmark is moderate? Does it invite investors to come to Denmark? Don't you think the tax rate of uh, starting a business here in Denmark, how do you rate that compared to other European countries? Denmark is a, is a part of the, the EU and, and we try to, to benchmark ourselves within the, the EU um, for corporate taxation. Uh, Denmark is currently at 25% uh, but will 
be reduced to 22% of corporate taxation by 2016. And that means that Denmark will uh, become below EU average in terms of uh, corporate taxation. But we, we prefer to talk about the overall cost structure of uh, running a business in Denmark, where one of the, the key strongholds, especially when comparing Denmark to uh, neighboring countries, uh, Sweden, uh, Sweden, Germany, Norway, yeah. or, or Norway, yes, um, is that uh, Denmark has a uh, flex security system, which is uh, basically a uh, social security system, um, which means that when a company establishes a business as an employer, they do not have very few costs uh, for social contribution and uh, hiring and firing costs are extremely low as this is uh, incorporated in the in the whole uh, salary and uh, and social model we have in Denmark so that means that uh, a foreign company will will easily be able to establish a business uh, with few costs but will also be able to uh, to um, scale up or scale down according to their their needs and, okay. and this uh, this strong um, setup means that uh, Denmark is extremely attractive for companies who wish to to start up um, in in a small scale, but potentially grow and uh, impl employ more people. Wow, wow, that is interesting. Mm -hmm. Probably that is why the World Bank, the Forbes magazine, and other uh, higher institutions have evaluated and consistently given Denmark a high ranking for the past five years for a place. A good place to do business. So that means they might have a competitive edge over other uh, countries in Europe. That is interesting. But when we come to financing, mm -hmm. what help can invest in Denmark under the Foreign Ministry of Denmark have for people who are interested to start business in Denmark? What type of finance help assistance could you give? Um, invest in Denmark uh, is a uh, is first and foremost uh, an organization which which provides uh, help and assistance uh, free of charge to the foreign companies. So uh, we work as uh, consultants on on the various projects and provide uh, background information, etc. Uh, we do not provide a um, a fin financial incentives uh, for the foreign investors, um, and in general uh, they are um, uh, treated. Uh, equally as to Danish companies, so there are no um, specific uh, incentives for foreign investors, but we do believe that the, the overall uh, business environment, um, plus uh, some of the uh, incentives which are available for Danish companies, for example, um, mm -hmm. uh, you could uh, apply for a moderate uh, um, uh, employee taxation for bringing in expatriates, okay. that, that is something which uh, which a lot of foreign companies, but also Danish companies, apply uh, due to the fact that uh, Denmark is a uh, is a high tax country. When mm -hmm. we talk about uh, personal income tax, mm -hmm. but also of course on the um, the um, the R and D level, there is yeah. a number of uh, of grants and uh, and programs which uh, foreign companies can easily tap into when they are established in Denmark. So that means the foreign companies also could have access to research and development. Exactly. Okay. And they, they, can, um, they can work both on, on project specific areas, but they can also apply for uh, a subsidy to employ a, a PhDs uh, okay. um, who can then uh, work in collaboration with the Danish universities in order to, to strengthen their, their current or or future product, product portfolio. Oh, portfolio. So I can easily conclude that the door is open for expatriates also to come down to Denmark to work in some of these uh, companies that are going to be established here. Definitely, okay. I think Denmark is a, uh, is a, uh, has a small population and, uh, mm -hmm. and a relatively low, low okay. employ, uh, well, employ um, employees. Um, Low unemployment, relatively speaking, but also a uh, a low popula population population growth. So, yeah. so there is a uh, there is a demand for for skilled uh, labor from from all over the world to wow. to come and 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 uh, contribute. Uh, uh -huh. and, and of course, this is 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 linked very much up to um, the knowledge intensive uh, sectors. But I think on on a broad level, there is a uh, there's a, a number of opportunities for for foreign expats who are, who are looking to. Uh, to work for, for Danish companies or foreign companies in Denmark. That is really great. Now, what about when we talk about legalization? Are companies that are interested to be established in Denmark, mm -hmm. what type of legislation could they have? Is there any kind of backing to help them to set up uh, in terms of 
legislation, I mean the, the law that we govern them to start up business in Denmark, do you provide certain help for them to mm -hmm. set up in terms of legalization and confidentiality actually? Yes, um, Denmark, uh, Invest in Denmark works uh, in full co confidentiality, so there's no um, risk of the information uh, coming to competitors or other interested stakeholders. Um, from the legal point of view, uh, mm -hmm. Invest in Denmark provides uh, overall information on, uh, on how to establish a business with what might be the best uh, legal setup for the company. Go in and uh, evaluate the investors' uh, uh, potential yeah. and prospect, etc. But, but when this has been established, we, we go in uh, uh, on, on various levels of uh, advisory services and, and also practical uh, level in terms of coordinating. Uh, network meetings and, and setting up uh, fact-finding missions. That is really great. Now, towards the end of my question, I will have many African uh, com companies that have shown interest in establishing uh, uh, companies here in Denmark. Do you have many of them or how many do you have? Uh, unfortunately, uh, not not many, if, if not any at all. I think um, their investment uh, focus from a board has been uh, has have been taking a shift uh, due to the the growing uh, growth markets in, in new uh, new areas of the world. Of course, Asia is beginning to fill, uh, take up a lot of space, um, but the Danish government is is also looking into uh, um, investment uh, potential from uh, up and coming countries uh, in, in new untraditional markets. And I think, um, of course, South Africa is, is one which is high on our, our list of uh, potential investors. Um, but in general, we, we are we're constantly uh, monitoring the, uh, the potential from, uh, from uh, Africa due to the fact that there is a strong economic growth. And, and, and we know that uh, if not today, then maybe within the mm -hmm. next uh, three to five years, we will be seeing this, uh, these investments. So, so the, the door is open. We hope to, to, uh, to see more. and, and, uh, and um, also could see some great potential from, from that part of the world. Sure, there are a lot of great potential from Africa. But have you also been making some promotional uh, uh, callings or promotional in, uh, invitations that we want people from Africa to come and invest in Tema? I think at this stage uh, the main uh, emphasis from the Trade Council has been upon the uh, export promotion. So, so through the uh, various Danish embassies there's been a lot of activity going on on the export promotion, particularly in uh, uh, East African uh, countries. Um, but through this, these activities, of course, we uh, we meet with uh, African uh, companies in, in Kenya, Uganda, mm -hmm. Tanzania, and, um, and and hopefully this can be uh, the door opener towards the uh, further activities on investment promotion. Uh, for uh, South Africa, it is. Uh, it has been pointed out as, uh, as one of uh, six countries besides the, uh, the BRIC countries, for Brazil, Russia, India and China. But then of these six uh, next uh, 11 countries, South Africa has been pointed out. And, and for this particular country, there has been made a, a strategy on how to, to approach investors from there. So I think based on experiences uh, uh, there, we will, will move forward. But, but of course, we are also aware of uh, strong potential in, in in countries such as uh, Nigeria and of course in, in Western Africa so um, I think we, we will we will uh, gradually develop well, our that will be very interesting area to look at because there are a lot of African countries that have large population mm -hmm. like Nigeria that you just mentioned and other African countries and I could see there are a lot of huge market for you down there mm -hmm. uh, thank you Nicholas Nelson it's a pleasure having you on Afro Scandic Guest Spot thank you and to our viewers you have heard it all from Nicholas and Nelson he has briefed us about potentialities opportunities that you could find if you want to establish your companies here in Denmark uh, consistently and uh, presently Denmark is one of the best places to set up business. Send us for email companies. at info at afroscanning.com. And thank you once again, Nicola, for your Thank time. you.